hello 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 to the world i hope you're all doing well i wanted to film a fun vlog today i have some fun plans and i thought i should take you all along with me sorry what is that oh that is my stack of books i need to film an unhaul soon because i have lots of books to unhaul but that is not the point of this video we are going to have fun so basically i want to do some reading i want to build a little mini bookshelf I thought I could film a fun little Q&A as well just to give you some updates and connect with you all. Basically, let's just hang out for the day. So let's talk about my reading plans. I want to read some more of Watering the Soul by Courtney Pepinel. I talked about this in my most recent video where I was talking about some books I want to read soon and I said how I have been slacking with the poetry. So that night I started this. I'm on page 19. Oh my goodness, that was the perfect move, especially because I was feeling quite down that day. The comforting words of healing poetry was exactly what I needed and I really adore Courtney Pepinel and I'm loving this book. Let me just read you a little example. Finding meaning in this world and in this life can be as simple as slowing down and realizing that just by existing, you already hold so much meaning in this life. I love it. And basically the premise is that you go into the forest, you're feeling really lost and you meet this little cutie and they show you how you can find yourself and grow your soul again. You're really, really stunning. So I definitely want to read some more now, honestly. But yeah, I definitely want to read a little bit of this today. And I also want to read The Horizon Volume 2. Once again, this was in my most recent video in my book haul portion. I am so excited to read this because I read volume one and was dying for the second volume but it was really expensive so I was waiting for it to go down in price and I finally got it and I am dying to see how the story continues because wow I am obsessed it's basically about this little boy and this girl who find each other it is the end of the world not many people are alive there are people who are like zombies and they basically only have each other and together they must move forward toward whatever the future holds I absolutely adore the art style and let's not look at the spoilers <laughs> but yeah I definitely want to read that because as soon as it arrived I was like I need to read this ASAP I don't know what's going on with my voice I feel like lately I've been having days where it just gets really croaky. I'm not sick or anything. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, yes, I'm very excited for that. I'm also watching One Day on Netflix. Everyone has been talking about that show. Apparently it's based on a book. I've never heard of the book actually, but I was really excited to watch it. I had Tess come over the other day and we decided to watch it together. So we watched, I think, three episodes and I was kind of into it, but I was also like, I don't know how I feel about these characters, especially the guy, Dex. I'm not obsessed with him. He was annoying me and it was a really slow start, but I decided I'll just watch it in the background. So I was watching it while I was getting ready this morning and I think I watched like two episodes. I am kind of intrigued now and I'm kind of into it and I'm invested. I was determined to have it as a background moment, but I was like, yeah, interesting. I will definitely watch some more tonight, I think. I also need to do some editing and emails and stuff, but yes. So I think I'm actually going to answer a few emails first, do some work on the computer. Oh yes, look at my fun nails. Look at my fun nails, ignore this, but they're very fun and colorful. And I'm very excited for my next set because I'm going to Japan and I'm gonna do some cute, like maybe Hello Kitty nails or something. I also will definitely vlog my Japan trip, so expect a long ass vlog for that. I also need to edit my Taylor Swift vlog. I did vlog when I went to Taylor Swift when Caitlin was here. I went with Caitlin and Kaz. It was such a fun weekend, so I need to also edit and upload that. But yes, I'm going to do some work now and then I will read a little bit of Watering the Soul.
so I'm on page 40 of Watering the Soul and I love it. I want to cherish it so I don't want to read it too quickly. So I just want to read a little bit every day, hopefully, even if it's just one page. That's my new goal to read at least one page every day because I used to read, you know, like 100 pages a day. <laughs> and unfortunately, my life schedule does not allow that right now. But I want to get back into making reading more of a routine. So at the moment, I'm just trying to read at least one page a day. Obviously, hopefully more than that, but you know, even if it's just one page of poetry, thank you. Yes, I am absolutely drawing this. Like, look at those stunning illustrations. I want to read out a little passage from page 24. She did not see that living life like a race and spending every day consumed with such haste meant she had missed out on the beauty of dreaming and learning what it truly means to be a human being. This has been such a priority of mine over the past few years, just really slowing down, appreciating each moment for what it is, noticing the beauty around you because there's always beauty around you. Who is this? This is Pema. Hello. Yes, so as I was saying, slowing down, breathing, acknowledging the importance of rest and stillness has been so key in my overall happiness and peace. So I love Courtney Pepper now, honestly. I'll never forget. I think it was 2022 where I had that stunning poetry calendar from Courtney Pepernell, where every day I would wake up and there was a new poem for the day. It was such a good way to start each day. And I was looking for the same last year. There was no such thing. And I couldn't find one for this year either. And it didn't even have to be Courtney Pepinell. I just couldn't find any poetry calendars. That was really disappointing. But anyway, those were the days when I had that in 2022. Oh, I just realized, shall we do my book stamp for this book? Cause I'm definitely not going to be getting rid of this. Okay, so before I start building my little bookshelf, I'm so excited for that. I think it's time to get a little bit serious. So let's put the glasses on. I need to talk about Love and Pies. Any chance I get to talk about Love and Pies, I will take. And I'm so happy that Love and Pies are sponsoring this video. I am literally the happiest person alive when I get to work with Love and Pies because it's just one of my favorite apps ever. I've been playing for over a year now, so I'm on level like 80 something. I absolutely love Love and Pies and it has brought me so much comfort and coziness over the past year. I just feel so safe in the Love and Pies world. Basically the game follows Amelia, who is a single mom, absolutely love her, who takes over her family cafe after a mysterious fire. So she has to turn this burned down cafe back into a beautiful business and you get to completely customize how your cafe looks and oh my God, my cafe is the best cafe of all time. Sometimes I feel emotional because I just want to go there and I obviously can't physically, but at least I get to go there on my phone. <laughs> it is just everything. I would do anything to work here in real life. So while you're rebuilding the cafe, you're also dealing with gossip. There is so much happening in the Love and Pies world at all times, honestly. There's a fun romance and there's also the mystery of her mum's disappearance. So let me show you my cafe. It is honestly huge and it's looking stunning. Like I said, I would do anything to be there. Like this is one of my favorite rooms. Look at that stunning bridge and all the flowers. We have, you know, the fun little gym. Honestly, there's everything here. There's a library. Look at this library. It is stunning. And like I said, you can fully customize it. And one of my favorite things is if you want to change the vibes, you can customize it after you've already made your selection. So I love that. And yeah, any game that I can fully customize my space, I'm going to be obsessed with. Honestly, I have too much to show you. Like, it's just huge. Like, look at that. Look at that. It just makes me so happy. I also love how diverse the characters are in this game. I just feel it's very inclusive and it celebrates so many different identities. And I just feel very safe, like I said, in this world. You basically merge ingredients together. So here are my orders at the top. I have all these customers asking for some orders so I can quickly give this person some honey. Here you go. It's so satisfying. Yeah, so you basically just have to match ingredients to serve the customers. There's also books and stuff, which is really fun. Of course, there's lots of fun baked goods. So you've got the fun drama filled storyline. You've got the lovable characters. You've got the fun gameplay, creating the orders. You've got the fun customization. Honestly, I'm sure you can see why I'm obsessed with this game. I go on Love and Pies multiple times a day and I just love at the end of a long day, especially getting in bed and getting cozy, playing my Love and Pies. I absolutely love it. The game is free to download on mobile devices, Android and iOS. So I highly recommend recommend joining the fun and downloading it and playing for yourself and thank you so much to love and pies for something this video now let's go build my bookshelf i will quickly just walk you through my thought process 
So I've really missed having a bookshelf in my room. So I wanted to get just like a little bookshelf for the books that I'm currently reading slash maybe books that I want to read ACP or books that I need to haul, that kind of thing. So this is my bedside table. I have tried putting books here, but I like my bedside table to be quite clean. So it usually ends up bothering me. I have some books here and these are books that I'm currently reading slash books I want to read soon, that kind of thing. And then I have these boxes. So I think here is the perfect place to put a cute little bookshelf and I'll move these books there and it will be cute and if you follow my Instagram you probably recognize this mirror so yeah it will be yeah it's just a little one but I'm very excited so we got the three tier bookshelf from Kmart it was literally $15 so super cheap I have my pink tool set so let's build it <laughs> I'm going to watch one day while I build it the ears it's a life tragedy but it's not like you Introducing my new bookshelf. Honestly, the serotonin from just building a new bookshelf, it's been years. So this is very, very exciting. And she's such a little cutie. Can't wait to put her in my room and definitely gonna decorate her now. I don't know exactly what my vibe will be, but definitely this top shelf will be like currently reading books. Anyway, who knows? The possibilities are endless. <laughs> oh, let's go. Okay, here is the bookshelf. I decided to put some books that I'm planning to unhaul soon there, just to fill in that gap. And yeah, here is my little bookshelf. I have a little Miffy on the top. This is a Miffy lamp, a little plant. For the top shelf, I decided to put this little book of memories from my 27th birthday. So it just has some little notes from people at my party. Here's little Caitlin. I have some Dreamy Moons notebooks, so these three are from Dreamy Moons, and I have some books that I'm currently reading, so The Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> I started this last year, I've read I think like 100 pages actually, I need to double check, but I'm really enjoying it, but it is very long, so I need to remind myself to finish it because I have it hidden at the moment, which is why I also wanted this bookshelf to just remind me of the books that I'm currently reading, because sometimes I forget, because I have so many. <laughs> But these are my two main priorities at the moment, Before We Were Strangers, which I'm really enjoying, and Watering the Soul, obviously the poetry book. On the second shelf, I have books that I want to read ASAP, and I also have this cute little Alice notebook, which is where I put some of my favourite quotes. So, for example, here are some of them. And yeah, I love that book, so that stays there. But yeah, so these are some books that I want to read soon, slash books that I know I want to slowly make my way through, you know? And on the bottom shelf, I have more books that I'm currently reading, but I have Devotions on top. I have already read this book. I absolutely love it. It is a collection of poems. I like to have easy access to this book because I like to just flip through and look at some of my favorite poems. So that just stays on top. But yeah, these books are books that I am currently reading. I started them a long time ago, so I really need to make some progress. 
but I think this is so cute and it's just so nice to have a little bookshelf in my room. I just love the energy being surrounded by books, so this definitely makes my room feel more me. Okay, I am obsessed, obsessed with my new bookshelf. I absolutely love it. And I love you Kmart, even though you always cancel my orders. But anyway, <laughs> I'm also really loving One Day. I watched a few more episodes while building and I really love it. I'm in a really interesting mood as a result of watching that. It's just very thought provoking. I just feel extra appreciative of the people in my life and what I have. Yeah, it's such an interesting one because I'm still not like absolutely obsessed with the characters, but I don't think that's the point. The characters are very interesting, flawed and messy. You see them over, I think it's like 10 or 20 years. So, you know, when I first met them in the beginning, obviously they're super young and messy. They had just finished college. So it's really interesting to watch them grow up. I just, I love media where you get to see the characters grow up, which is why I loved Boyhood, the movie, because that was filmed over like 20 years or something. I wish there were more movies like that. Obviously that's a lot of time and effort. And there's also complicated logistics. I go into that, I'm sure. But you know, I love a movie like that. It's so interesting. But yeah, so if you were like me and you were kind of hating on one day in the beginning, I would say give it a chance because yes, it does have an interesting slow start. Like I was not hooked. Well, I was actually kind of hooked in the first episode, but then in episode two and three, I was kind of like, what's going on here? But yeah, I'm really loving it. I could definitely just finish the whole thing now. But anyway, I am going to poll soon. So I'm going to read until I have to go. So I'm going to read the Horizon volume two. So yeah, let's do it. I am halfway through and wow another very thought-provoking story that was the case with the first volume and it continues to be the case for the second it's giving me slight death note vibes because like death note this has the question of you know playing god and thinking you alone knows what the right thing is for humanity and taking action on that. So it's very interesting. It takes a very different turn from the first volume, but still super interesting. Okay, what the hell? <laughs> Watching one day and reading this in the same day, it's a lot. If you don't want to have an existential crisis, I wouldn't recommend this series. It is a lot and it's very heavy on the discussions of death so you definitely need to be in the right headspace for this <laughs> it's also horror so it can be hard to read and this volume <laughs> i was not prepared so heartbreaking it was nearly too much <laughs> but wow incredible reading this is just a reminder of the power of storytelling yeah wow i'm definitely in that mood where i need to just like sit and look at the ceiling for a few hours but i need to go to poll so Anyway, <laughs> gonna take my makeup off and go to poll, but five stars. I love the series and I looked up volume three. I didn't realize volume three is the conclusion. So I need to get volume three ASAP and finish this series. I'm scared. I really, really adore this series and I feel like I have seen no one talk about it. I just saw it at the bookstore and I'm so glad I picked it up because it was a risky one. It was wrapped in plastic, so I couldn't even see the art style and I tried to look it up, but there's not much online about this, but I did see some good reviews. So I just decided to risk it. I don't even really know what it was about and wow, best decision ever. If you have any more manhwa recommendations, please let me know because I want to read more Korean stories, obviously. I'm so happy that there is a manhwa section in my books, Kino Kinea. Love you, books, Kino Kinea. I will talk to you when I get back. Actually, let's just get some good vibes going. Let's just quickly, before I go, pick a card from the Cosmic Guidance deck. This is from Bringing Moons, my absolute fave. Okay, let's do this card. Patience. Long road ahead, reward awaits. Love that. If you are feeling impatient with other people, learn to be okay with the fact that we are all living at our own unique paces and we are all on our own unique journeys. What true patience is, is knowing that you want it and knowing that it's coming and actually enjoying the unfolding along the way. Impatience takes us away from the present moment. It fills our minds with thoughts and wishes of the future and blinds us to how beautiful and special the present is. So true. I love that. And I've actually never gotten that card before. Bye. Yo.
you're about to witness something really special. Yes, that is what I'm talking about. And now we're going to simply serve this customer. There you go. Hello. I came back from pole last night, was so tired, so I just got cozy in bed and finished one day. <laughs> I know that people warned me, like I saw so many people talk about it on Instagram, that it was going to be heartbreaking, but I was really not prepared, especially because I spent a good chunk of the beginning of the series not really caring about the characters, but wow, <laughs> I love that show. So many tears. It was just so, yeah, thought provoking, like I said yesterday. And I really love the way that it's made me think about my life, especially in this current moment where I have a few stresses that I'm dealing with. It's just been very comforting. And yeah, I really loved it. I really, really loved it. But I am going to answer some of the questions that some of you asked me on my Instagram. What is the status of the Bunny Banter pod? Bunny Banter is the podcast that I started with Caitlin. We were loving it, but it is a lot of work. So a lot of time and work is needed for that. And unfortunately, we don't have that at the moment. So, you know, in an ideal world, we would love to put out episodes like weekly because we really love filming for the podcast. But unfortunately, we can't do that right now. So at the moment, we're just going to try to film episodes when we can. So even if that's just like one episode every six months, we're just not putting any pressure on it. We do actually have an episode that we filmed where we talked about Lord of the Rings. And that is one of my favorite. I just need to edit it so that will be coming at some point but yeah I really wish that we could you know be really consistent but we just have too much going on so unfortunately that is the current status. Weekly workout routine including pole. So I go to pole a few times a week and I also do pole prac at my home. That is definitely my main form of exercise, but I also go on walks. Ideally a daily walk if I have time. I try to get the 10K steps in. I like to do fun little dance workouts on YouTube, fun little exercise routines on YouTube, home Pilates. And I also just like to do other fun things like tennis. Like I like to do fun little outdoor activities like skateboarding as well. When are you returning to Ireland and having the crack with Kevin? I love that question. Oh my God, I would do anything. Especially because I haven't met Kevin's boyfriend Gabriel. I would love to meet him. I've obviously met him on FaceTime and stuff, but you know, we need to all have fun together. And honestly, Caitlin, Kevin and I were talking about it the other day. It's crazy that Kevin, Caitlin and I have never met in person all together. Obviously I've met Caitlin and Kevin separately, but you know, we've not all hung out together in person and that is just heartbreaking. So yeah, hopefully, you know, within the next few years we can make that happen, but obviously flights are super expensive and getting time where we're all free. You know, it's it's tricky. So I don't have any plans right now, but I would love to go back to Ireland. What's the one thing that gives you power? I think remembering everything I've been through and how I've been able to overcome those challenges and knowing that I'll always be there for myself and I can always rely on myself, that definitely gives me power. What's one of your favorite quotes? I do have my book of quotes that I showed you before. So let me read out one of these. Let's go with the mystery of life isn't a problem to solve, but a reality to experience. I have definitely had my moments where I am having an existential crisis and wondering what the point of life is. And this mindset shift has been key in my piece. Just letting go of all those questions, like what does it all mean? And instead just experiencing life and appreciating it for all it is. How have you and your boyfriend been coping with long distance? It's definitely been super hard. If you don't know, he's in Canada right now, but he is coming back sooner than expected. So he will be back next month, which is super exciting. So if you don't know, he did meet in Australia, but then he had to go to Canada to work for a bit. So yes, he will be back. And I'm very excited because obviously I definitely prefer seeing him in person. We do obviously FaceTime every day. That has been really nice, but you know, I want the cuddles and I want to have fun memories with him. So it's been hard, but knowing that he's coming back has been what we've been clinging on to. And yeah, just obviously communication, all of that. Honestly, I'm in the excited phase right now because it's soon. It's really soon that he's coming back. Not in a mean way, but why are your videos getting shorter? I have seen a few comments asking this on some of my recent videos, and it's definitely not a conscious choice. I think it's maybe just a result of less time. Yeah, it's so hard to juggle everything in this world. Do you ever feel scared to post a video? And if yes, how do you overcome that fear? 
Absolutely. When I first started posting on YouTube, like a lot of people asked me, how did I overcome that fear to start posting? I actually didn't really have much fear because I was convinced no one would watch my videos. But obviously that was years ago. So now do I get scared? Yes, I do sometimes. The fear comes from the fact that I'm posting a video on the internet and anyone can see it. <laughs> like that is scary because I love to share content. I love to share my life and my thoughts with the world. And most days I'm happy with that. But some days I do think, oh, <laughs> That's a little scary. Like literally anyone, including people who hate me, can click and watch my videos. And sometimes I don't wanna be perceived, you know? <laughs> so that has been a bit of a struggle sometimes because it doesn't always completely feel like a safe space, which of course the internet's never gonna be completely a safe space. But that is why I love and appreciate my Patreon so much because I can still post and share content, but I just have no fear. Like when I'm filming and editing my Patreon videos, I, know that it's people who actually want to be there and want to watch me and you know support me in some way so I don't have that fear of getting judged. It just feels like a completely safe space where I can just completely be myself. I don't need to over explain myself like if I'm making a silly joke you know something like that. But yeah I obviously have been doing this for years now so it's not like it's a huge thing for me but it's always in the back of my mind when I'm filming and editing and uploading like on my YouTube channel because I know that people can take things the wrong way. I just feel like I'm super hyper aware of how someone could perceive me, which I hate, I don't want that. So honestly, thank you for asking this question because me saying this out loud has made me realize how much I need to let go of that because I don't like to live like that. I want to just be my authentic self and not live in fear of what others think about me. So seriously, I need to let go of that. Okay, I'll answer one more question. Any advice for someone in their first long-term relationship? I think key advice is making sure that you still make time for yourself and your friends and family. When you get into a new relationship, it's obviously super exciting and you just wanna spend all your time with that person, but you need to make sure you don't lose yourself in a relationship because that can very easily happen. So I would say make sure you maintain your independence, keep making time for the hobbies that you love, make sure that you're putting in effort in your other relationships and working on yourself because not only is that healthier for the relationship, it's also just healthier for you because you never want to completely rely on one person. Oh, and I'd also say to do regular check-ins, even if you think you don't need to. So maybe once a month or so, just ask questions to your partner, like, you know, are you happy with our relationship? What things would you like to change? Because I feel like it's easy, especially if you're just happy in the relationship, to not ask those questions. And you may not know that your partner secretly has a few areas that they'd like to improve on, you know? So yeah, just obviously communication, checking in and maintaining your independence and identity. So I'm actually gonna go edit this vlog now, but I had a very fun time hanging out with you all. I hope you enjoyed. And thank you so much to Love and Pies once again for sponsoring this video. It's free to download, so I highly recommend joining me in playing Love and Pies. If you're looking for more content from me, I have a Patreon always linked below, which is where I upload extra content. So we have our monthly book club. I upload extra reading vlogs, live shows, and more. I have all my socials linked below. I hope you're all having a good day and night, and I'll hopefully see you in my next video. Thank you.